recording. You're recording already? <laughs> yeah. Dude, you're just yeah. like trigger happy, aren't you? I like ya? to do that. Oh, don't have to get so close. Oh, of geez. course I do. <laughs> you know it. A little your coffee. Well, I didn't even get us going live here yet. All right, so you get us started since I'm the... Mm. Uh, John and Tara podcast. Still setting up. What are we talking about today? And you said we're talking about submission. I, of course, okay. said yes. Oh. <laughs> that's how it goes, I'm gonna That made it easy. That. Yep. So that's just how we roll. Uh -huh. I'm gonna set this up here. We're gonna have to lean in. Lean in, John. When you see this preview, that's not the preview. That that's not the actual width of the screen, there's more. Okay, but I'm this looking was, at this one. This is that. Alright. Why are we going live? Because. We're just generating yeah, we need to get 50 subscribers on YouTube so we can go live on YouTube, which is really where we want to go. Mm. Are we even okay. going it? Uh, six followers are I... active now. Because you went, that's the backside camera. Yeah, but why do I feel like an old person going, how do I do this? Because you are. <laughs> you know, it happens really, it can happen really quickly where you're like, all of a sudden, there you checking go. connection. <laughs> what button was that? All right. Hey that everybody. That was the eight millimeter. Yep. Then you had to press it again. Wow. Everybody, John and Tara podcast. Sometimes they make things too easy. Drink coffee. <laughs> Cheers. You know this thing isn't all the way in there. It's crooked. <laughs> you would, yeah, we'll leave it the way it is for I now. Don't touch it. All right, hey everybody, we're going live with Having our- Having scones from Ruby's Roost in Victoria. What up? This is the first part of, we're recording our our um, podcast. Mm -hmm. And so we're sampling the first part of it here. We're actually, this is our 91st episode. And we're finally 91. doing live. Mm -hmm. We're finally doing live. Uh, but we, No, we're finally doing video. Well, live and video. We've done this four is, lives before. Well, why, why did you tell me? Audio only. <laughs> <laughs> you remember we had Irvin call in from, from uh, Columbia. Okay, that was a while ago. So it's John and Tara podcast on YouTube. Make sure to subscribe. Once we get up to 50 subscribers, we can go live there. And we want to um, be able to take questions uh, and yeah. do all that fun stuff as well. So you got to have 50 subscribers to go live. So and check please, out our, our please subscribe our back catalog as well um, i'll put a link to it in in the comments but we all are also on spotify apple um podcasts yep. and so forth so yeah. I, itunes apple podcasts itunes if you go from youtube but apple podcasts if you're on your phone or your computer <laughs> so maybe just a quick intro you know, we cover in you know, the John Terra podcast. It started out as marital arts podcast, and then we had people saying, "Well, I'm not married." Well, we were doing stuff to help people also who were in a significant relationship. We talk business. Uh, we talk entrepreneurship. Business, just relationships in general. Relationships. I'm just gonna repeat everything you say. I'm gonna repeat everything you say. <laughs> I'm gonna repeat everything you say. And so we talk about a variety of topics, um, health and wellness. Uh, we just got done mountain biking. And so we'll cover uh, a number of things. So we've been married 22 years. And so a lot of this is just what we wish we had known years ago, whether it was personally about in um, working in a relationship, business, really just putting it out there. Um, Cause you know, we think that having a long, re healthy relationship it, really helps in so many areas, all your other areas of life. Again, make sure you go to YouTube to John and Tara podcast and that's spelled out J-O-N-A-N-D, John and Tara, T-A-R-A -A podcast on YouTube. And if you spell that all correctly, you pass the test. You get to subscribe. <laughs> both of our names are a little bit slightly different, but not too much. So. What did we talk? Yesterday we talked about emotions and that your feelings actually are sending you a message. Something I wish I had learned about, oh, you know, 20 years ago. <laughs> but that was a that was a good quickie, uh, just under 20 minutes. 18. Yep. Yeah. So today you wanted to talk about submission, and my joke is, of course, I said yes. <laughs> so, so John, what do you mean by submission? In, in particular, submission of a 
wife to a husband and well it's a hot topic right now and John what are you like 180 years old or something yeah <laughs> 8,000. 8,000 yeah. I'm years from old? around before the Bible was written. Yeah? Yeah. Yep. Seems well, kind of antiquated to be, um, you know, for a wife to have to submit to her husband. What if he's dumb? Well, it's funny that you say that. Um, well, did, did, she, <laughs> did she marry him? <laughs> yeah, right. Don't choose a dumb guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, and if Number you do, one. don't uh, complain about it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I would say that there you it's interesting you brought up history right you yeah. brought up ancient history because that is where a lot of these principles come from um, because the guy was the protector the guy was looking out for danger women the women were taking care of the kids um, the guy was hunting the guy knew the lay of the land the terrain i'm sure the women did back then too but um, if the guy said get down get behind that rock because I say that to you all the time. Yes, yeah. at home. There's some rocks yeah. here, I, I'll tell you. We're in, in the, a little bit. We're in the living room, you're like, get down. Get down. Get over there. Get down, get on your yeah, hands and knees. <laughs> get on your knees. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> so, uh, and you're always like, boom. Yeah. Right away, right away, okay. Mm -hmm. No, I, I think that uh, it's, it's it, you know, we, we say partnership, marriage, um, husband and wife. Uh, it is a business it is a partnership and in a business everybody has their roles in marriage everybody has their roles it can't be equal it can't be 50 50 there's got to be decisions that you make together there's got to be decisions you that I make alone that you make alone because we're not always together um, and we have to we're we're technically we're both submitting to our marriage you know and then there's hierarchies within that and I just want people to know that that's okay I want men to know it's okay I want women to know it's okay I want kids to know it's okay I want the parents to understand that the kids have to submit you know and the children need to know that too um, and for the most part you know corporal punishment discipline you know spankings have gone away you know in public <laughs> mostly uh, I remember when I was a kid you get spanked in the store, and if you were doing something and your parents weren't around, it wasn't your parents spanking you. It was somebody grab you by the arm and swat your butt and say, knock that off, you know, find your parents, you know, something like that. And I'll tell you what, that that is a good thing, you know. Well, you're kind of mixing topics now. Well, yeah, okay, well, I, I didn't want... <laughs> As I, if submission I, wasn't enough I of didn't, a, a... I <laughs> didn't know if you wanted me to talk about your, your spankings, so... <laughs> no, we'll save that for... Uh, <laughs> a subscribe special subscriber podcast <laughs> yeah I didn't know so obviously by now I can joke about it maybe I'll maybe I'll jump in and say you know early, early on, on it was tough for you it's still it's still even just you know I can joke about it and be like yeah of course we're going to talk about this and the answer is submission but but it's still kind of there's a cringe I cringe, you know, and I think it's because, you know, the way I grew up and typically my generation, you know, you're, is very much about being the strong, yeah. <laughs> strong, independent woman. And so, I mean, submission is like nixed out of the dictionary, right? Mm -hmm. And, and so it's still, it's kind of like when you have a childhood experience and it's just ingrained in you, like... Uh, you have a bad food experience or something like that and you're just like, uh, yeah, I'm just never going to do that again. Still, I have to say, just kind of, it's cringeworthy. But when I have experienced and see, not only in our relationship, but maybe other relationships where, first of all, I think is a great point that you're saying you're actually submitting to the relationship. Would you say a little bit more about that? What? What is submitting to the relationship? You're saying that oh. is precedent over submitting to just well, one this, to this another. Well, this is going to lead into a much longer conversation. We'll have to do segments. Okay. Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of uh, some of the pop topics on YouTube and on podcasts now are are men that are what they're calling high value, you know, high net worth, um, in a good position in life. 
have everything established, have business, or, or are very high earners in, you know, working for companies, corporations, that kind of thing, or investment firms, whatever. Um, guys like that, they say, are able to be married and have side women. And they're trying to normalize this. And, it, and it's part of a, to me, it's part of a grander narrative of confusing people. And I don't think it's correct. So uh, submitting to your relationship is is being true to the person you have dedicated yourself to, being true to the lifestyle that you have chosen together. Um, you know, saying no. I, I there, there's no shortage of of ladies out there that that you know are in the market that are looking that are. You know, and, and they're attractive and they're funny and they're fun to talk to and stuff. But I need to, when I'm out, I need to make sure that I don't go too far in conversations or in in settings, scenarios where the wrong impression is given. And then some lady says something to me and then I'm in a compromising situation where I have to say, oh, no, I'm married, you know, that kind of thing. Um it should always be apparent that I'm married and I don't wear a ring because I come from the machining field and you, you, you know, electricians and machinists can't wear rings. Um, and it just becomes a kind of a habit not to. And to be honest, I've been hit on more. I've been propositioned more when I've been wearing a ring than when not. And that, so it's kind of a little bit of a strategy. You know, if you, if you're single, if you look single on your hand, you actually, it seems that there's not as much attention given uh, because I don't know why. I, I, well, I've said heard before, some strategies. You, you've said before or you've heard that, you know, if you're visu visibly married, then it's like, oh, he's pre-qualified. Pre-qualified, committed, loyal, established, you know. He's that, marriage material, that obviously. Of, right, that kind of stuff. So, yeah. so I've been... Um, you know, it's just a habit that I don't wear rings. I have some other rings that I like when I see them, but I don't wear them. Um, I've toyed around with getting a, a silicone band and stuff like that because it, if it gets pulled or crushed, it doesn't stay get stuck to you. Yeah, so, they break. They're meant to break. Anyway. Um, so then that that's the topic. Of, you're you're submitting to the relationship. Being being true to the dedication that you made. You know, and and if you are. Uh, I've also seen, listened to some podcasts, watched some shows where people are, you know, they're married for, usually it's around that six or seven years. The seven year itch, uh, Yeah, maybe, say. maybe. And they're like, you know, I was thinking we should maybe spice something up here. You know, we've been married 22 years and I've never once even thought of bringing somebody into our relationship or, you know, it, it's hard enough being in a, in a good, well-functioning relationship, you know. Yeah bring in someone else <laughs> <It's> like, no <laughs> you're no. asking for it yeah. yeah and these guys that say they date all these women you know they, they just don't have the ability to commit and they don't have the depth to sustain and so uh, you know it's it like I said this is a longer conversation we can get through some of the surface stuff that we're talking about now or sharing here um, but I think it is it is so very important to, to stay true to the commitments you've made consistent in your life, you know, your whatever you're doing, your job, your business, you know, your your friends, your the things you expose yourself to that may pull you away from the things that are important to you. You know, I you've been with me twenty two years and, and I'm very good at cutting things out of my life that are pulling me away from what I need to do and what I want to do. Yeah. And that's a commitment to myself. That's being loyal to the things that I need to do to get to where I want to go. Again, let me jump in here. Go to go to YouTube, go to John and Tara Podcast, and subscribe. It's not johnandterrapodcast.com. It's John and Tara Podcast on YouTube. And subscribe. We need 50 subscribers so that we can, um, we can go live on YouTube. 
Yep, and we'll take we'll be um, in the future taking questions. Uh, we want to interact with you. Again, this podcast is about the things that we've learned over 22 years of relationship and marriage. The things that we wanted to know 20 some years ago that we just didn't know. Someone, you know, we didn't see it as examples in our life or just because of our unique situation. Uh, we had to learn along the way and definitely want to be a help whether you're in a relationship yet or not. If that's what you aspire to, to have is a long term quality relationship, uh, we want to help uh, answer those questions. So, But we need 50 subscribers to start going live on YouTube. So make sure to go to John and Tara. And our names are spelled J-O-N, spell out and, A-N-D, and Tara is T-A-R-A. So it's John and Tara podcast. And go ahead and subscribe there. And, op- and of course, share with your friends too. So this podcast in particular is about submission. We're going to do a series on submission. And it sounds like this one is formulating around um, submitting to the relationship. And I have, as you were talking, I was thinking about how I feel that I've submitted to the relationship. Mm. Shall I share? Go ahead. All right. When there's a point in our relationship where I I felt, and I've heard this a lot as we've, we've been listening to podcasts about particularly young women you know on a panel or calling in and saying they want a high value man you know I want this lifestyle I you know I want this type of house this many kids this type of vehicle and a a number of of, thankfully so it's usually men offering advice and we want to be a couple offering insight you know because we've lived through it and there's a man and a woman's perspective wouldn't it be nice if you could just walk into something that's (laughs) pre-made that's like the fast food economy right that, that you think that you get to walk into something and you don't have to put any work in and you don't have to be part of the building of it. It's so much more satisfying when you, are, when you have been part of it. Being married 22 years, you've been a massive part of all my business endeavors, all my accomplishments, and like 100% of all my failures. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> I guess that they're obviously my fault. <laughs> No, and I, a part of taming the beast, taming the wild beast. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> yeah. But you like it. It's, it's I do. I do. Taming yeah, petting the, the fur down in the right mm-hmm. direction. Yeah, there's mm-hmm. that. <laughs> so I was this woman, this type of woman as well, who who wanted these things. And, and part of it is I think that you have a certain expectation in how you grow up. And how you grow up is already your standard I think the way you grew up you expect oh I'm at least gonna live at that level Mm. Um, I think we're gonna cut it off on the live here and uh, this the segment on Instagram yeah we're recording on on another camera here so we're gonna get the full thing so go ahead and go to YouTube Um, later today we'll have the John will have the recording up probably the video will be up in a few hours yep and so that's John and Tara J-O-N and Tara, T-A-R-A, podcast at YouTube. Make sure to subscribe, share with your friends, um, and so we can get on the road to taking live questions and answering things, um, your questions as well. And we're gonna go off the recording here on Instagram, but we will, uh, I'll continue my lessons uh, in a short bit uh, as we go along here. Nice. All right. Thank you. Um, Make sure you go to check us out at YouTube, johnandterapodcast.com. We'll have the full recording there. And um, we'll see you there. Take care, everybody. All right. We're still live here. Yep, we're still going there. Let's make sure that your face is in there. You want to move this now. And There we go. All right. So I was one of these young women who was like, okay I grew up in upper middle class home and you know both parents worked but you know both parents had vehicles we lived in a nice um, home that my parents had built when I was um, like 13 and so you have a certain expectation of how your life is going to be and that was that was certainly the case for me and when we got together I just assumed that that would continue And I think this is what I hear in a lot of the young women. And I I don't necessarily blame the women because this is really how our society has really formulated how we, how, how we think. I remember my grandma has said a number of times, she grew up in rural Northern Minnesota. 
And she said, we didn't know how poor we were until we got a television. Mm. She said, until then, it was just radio. And I think that was in the, the 50s when they got a television. She said, we didn't know how poor we were until we saw how other people were living, even though that was TV, right? That's not necessarily how people were living. That's just like today, that is TV. You know, what you see on The Real Housewives is not how everybody is living, right? <laughs> or The Kardashians, that's not how everybody is living. And that that has really sunk in over time, um, and especially having listened to these podcasts with these young women really asking, in some instances, asking these men, you know, how do I get a high value man? And in some cases, they're really just emphasizing, you know, your standards are, are way up here. And, you know, with, with media in front of us all the time, we, we need to make a decision at this point what we're going to believe. And yeah. so that was the reality for me. I had to realize that, okay, this kind of lifestyle, well, part of it, I did come into a ready-made situation. You did have a house um, already, although you were pursuing a business in another city, you were living in an apartment. In I order was renting to, my house out, yeah. You were renting your house out. Isn't that hilarious? I was yeah. renting before everybody started buying houses and renting. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. renting my house. <laughs> so, you know, I think that kind of, or, continued to, to skew my thoughts of what did it really take to live a certain way. Um, so what, in submitting to our relationship, mm. I had to kind of humble myself in that sense. I had to even, I had never lived on my own. I mean, I had been on my own a lot, but I had never technically lived on my own. And so my perspective was not fully developed, we'll yeah. say, in that way. And uh, I had some learning to do, and so I had to have some humble pie in that sense, and realize... How'd that taste? <laughs> um, <laughs> it's really tough at first. Uh. Yeah. And, you know, realizing, you know, deciding really ultimately what was I going to contribute to the relationship. But you made it. 22 years now. Well, I'd had... I think the biggest part, because submission is not necessarily easy. It, I, I think that's kind of what makes it such a, a bitter pill to swallow is that it's just it's it's not easy. Because um, it, it feels like you're giving. I think it, it tend you tend to think that you're giving up something, when really you. I don't know. I'm gonna have to explore that a little bit more. But what, is there any empowerment in the submission? Is there, did you gain anything? I mean, nobody, I never told you, you have to submit to me. Yeah. I, I just told you there are certain things that we're doing. What are you doing? I just wanted to yeah. make sure I'm in frame. There you go, okay. in frame. It's, it's much wider. Oh, okay. We're just looking at the front screen on our camera. Right. <laughs> yeah, you're, you, was there any, did you, what did you gain from, no, no, I never said you have to submit. You never said, I'm submitting. We, we settled into, a dynamic that worked in our marriage and in our life but there was times when I said I love you but you have to change some of these things well I think we're trying to stick to one segment like this is going to be a series right yeah and so can I reserve that mm -hmm. for another podcast yeah because what I'm talking about right now is is submitting to our relationship okay and what was pulling me away from our relationship were my desires I thought that I should live a certain way have a certain lifestyle and I had to have that piece of humble pie and you know instead of letting yep. my desires get in between us and, and make me bitter allowing that to make me bitter and wedge between us I had to decide either I was going to change my standards or I was going to participate in a different way so that I was no longer demanding that of you but I was making that possible through my own efforts. So what were you demanding of me? Well, I thought that I, you know, we should live a certain way. I thought, you know, we should have us live in a certain area, house, you know, uh, vacations or toys, you know, vehicles. And, and you know, I was building business. And you, and then we did start our marriage where we were building business together mm -hmm. and and so I, I had to change from putting that responsibility. I either had to, 
to change my standards because it was it was bothering me and then the way I was interacting with you it would bother it get between us mm -hmm. and so it was not good for the relationship and so it took me quite a while years but I because it was building up I decided eventually that either I'm gonna have to change what my expectations are or I'm going to have to participate at a different level and I, I obviously my level of expectations of what I think that you should be doing and providing is not good for our relationship so I had to submit myself this is where I see is submitting to the relationship for the good of the relationship I had to change myself one of two ways and I, I decided to participate more yeah, you're jumping over a lot of years. Yeah, it is a lot of years. Yeah, when, yeah. when did you start participating more? <laughs> well, Eight, I thought... 18 years in. I thought that I was, you know, <laughs> I, I had... <laughs> we could draw a timeline out. <laughs> There's a long timeline. Yeah. Uh, because I, I thought that I was, by being the quote, submissive wife and being at home and cooking meals and and being the support for you I thought well that should be the support he needs to provide the lifestyle I want well you you were and that was that doesn't mean that money automatically magically appears right yeah yep <laughs> so yes, yes there was a lot of years in between it took me a long time to figure this out hence the podcast <laughs> you know we can speed up the timeline a little bit for well, you well we could help yeah we can help people get to the get to the 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 end quicker the the good the finish line let's say the the crossing okay. over the goals that you want that you're going to work towards anyway or you know and and avoid the avoid the the problems the divorces the all the things because you think that that person is not doing what that first of all they said they could I heard a woman the other day say I got divorced because my husband he he didn't do what he said he was gonna do and that's a really you know it's there's so much in that it's well, like that could be so many things well it's like no it's like it's like how you just kind of told the story but you went from two years in to 18 years in yeah. and, and it's like you know well Tara, Tara did it she started participating so that she could blah 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 and that's what somebody would say about you. They'd say, good for you. But, but they didn't hear about the 18 years in between. Yeah. You know. And so when a woman says, I got divorced because my husband didn't do what he said he was going to do. My question is, what was he doing? Was he trying to do what he said he was going to do, but he needed more understanding, more, more knowledge, more, more training, more time in the field, more, you know, more years to build it up? Well, a good example. And are, are you just saying, well, he didn't do it because you don't understand the process, the process that it takes for a man to become, first of all, accomplished. Yeah. Second of all, well known in his field so he can get more business. Third of all, uh, competent enough to have a steady income. Then, then we can start talking about savings and being rich. And maybe someday we can talk about being wealthy and or retired and having enough. But the amount of people that do that are probably one to two percent of the entire country. Well, even the IRS, last I checked, gives you five years to turn around a profit on a new business. Yep. Even the IRS knows how that hard it, it is. Takes, <laughs> and that, on average, I mean, if you're working hard, that's you, a great point. You can turn you can turn around sooner. You can make a profit sooner. Yeah. But they know that if you're reinvesting and uh, maybe still working a job and yeah. reinvesting that money, mm -hmm. that they give you essentially five years. Now, don't take this as tax advice or some details. No, no, no. But, but how many how many women out there are not giving their guy five years? Yeah. You know how many divorces end in the first year two or three you know and it's like like you said you know we don't have what i think we should have we're not doing this we're not doing that you know what what does that mean right you know, what does it mean and uh so where i submitted to the relationship i thought long and hard you know 18 years or so <laughs> almost 18 years but it was literally i value my relationship with you more than stuff 
Yeah. I mean, I still wanted a certain way of living, yeah. but I was like, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to do my best to no longer harangue John for this. And I'm going to put myself in the position to make our life and lifestyle the way that I would like to. Why don't you, des it. Why don't you describe me to people? Awesome. Yeah, that's great. Just <laughs> describe me, like, what is my work ethic? Um, I mean, you'll do literally whatever it takes. How, how many alarm clocks do I have to set to get up? None. How many times do do does anybody call me and say, you need to get into the shop, you need to get into the company and take care of something? Never. Never, I mean, that's, right? Yeah, no, yeah. They don't need to they check up on you. You're doing, you're doing all of. The and needs and to be I'll done say and more. something to any woman anywhere. If you've got a guy like that, you've got a winner. You've got someone who's gonna go somewhere. Someone who's gonna reach some level that most other men can't. And honestly, one of my biggest challenges was finding something that I could do so that we could still spend time together. Because we both love spending time together and doing and working on things together. And so I had the added challenge, which is why it took me so long. I don't think we should. <laughs> I don't think we should get into talking about your business right now. I think no. this this should be a time progression in these in these next yeah. few podcasts. Well, yeah, but just generally saying, you know, it. That was part of the, yeah. the thought process. Yeah. And ultimately, it was me choosing our relationship over anything else. And that's submitting also, submitting to the relationship. Well, that's what time. you got to do. That's that's all you have. I mean, I, I had been married a couple other times, and I know, you know, it, as you get older, your, your, your options become less. And yeah, there's a huge market out there of people who are in their 40s and divorced. You know, but but they come with all the baggage of living life before 40. So you got to decide if you you made the choice to get into the relationship you're in. Why why did you do that? Yeah. You know, did you do it because you saw and believed that it was that it was what you wanted? Well, then sit down with your partner, with your husband, wife, and and say, you know, this is what I want. However, I think we should be working on some things and let the other person talk let them explain to you what they're doing it was if it was you talking to me saying you know i want to live in bear path i want to be in a gated community i want to drive a mercedes i want to fly to cancun twice a year i want to go to hawaii once every two years i want to you know i want to have uh half a million dollars in our in our pension in our retirement fund in our i want to have some savings in the bank i want to be able to just go to the store and buy a, a you know a new person an outfit whenever I feel like it you know then then you have to be quiet you have to yeah, shut the F up after that and let me talk to you and let me tell you the things I want you know when when you say that's what you want from somebody they're probably not gonna say well my number one goal in life is to provide all of that for you I'm just gonna work until I'm 70 mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna work myself literally to death so that you can have everything you want, you know. And and if and if your woman sits down and says all that, you might not be the kind of guy that she wants. You might not be the kind. She might not be the person you want. You might not. You might not have realized who you married. So you got to talk. That's the number one thing is communication. On our ten marital arts list, number one is communication. You know, and 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 then number two is patience. You know, mm -hmm. and and that's so important to be able to communicate. And I want you to say those things if that's what you want, because there are a lot of unrealized assumptions that people have, and that's usually what destroys relationships, is uncommunicated assumptions and, and unrealized assumptions for the person that has them, because they're, they're always thinking, well, I wanted this and I don't have it. I wanted this by this time and I don't have it. And that time went by two years ago. And I want, you know, and they have this huge list in their head, mostly women and they they expect it but they don't communicate it and so it's got to be communicated just because you're thinking about it doesn't mean your guy knows that that's what you want and just because you said it once in passing while you're walking through the mall or while you're going to a movie or while you're at dinner doesn't mean he remembers it <laughs> you know because guys remember things that are very very important first you know they remember to top off your car 
gas. They remember to check the air pressure in your tire. They remember to make sure that your oil is topped off. They remember to take your vehicle to get serviced if a wheel is wobbling. You know, they, they take care of very serious things. In, in that sense, that would just be your average guy at home, you know, not a mechanical guy. Just making sure your car is running right. Then they make sure that the home is defensible, right? They make sure the doors are locked at night. Usually that's the guys, right? They make sure that they're that their firearms are in places and, and that are accessible, you know, locked up of course, but accessible. And and they might go around and turn off the outside lights. They might even walk the perimeter of the property at night or look out the windows a couple times, you know? Well, it might be too, if, if he's the main breadwinner, that, you know, he's making sure that a certain amount of money is going into savings here and there before all the whims. Well, he might right? be investing. Similarly. He might be investing. You might not know it. You know, I was buying gold when gold was 330 bucks. And then when it went up to 1200, I sold it and I paid off some, some, uh, uh, principle on some machines that I had mm -hmm. and uh, you know that that type of thing is going on constantly with guys right and so because if you are the provider you know and the one thing I promised you when we got together was you'll always have a roof over your head and you always have the best food that I can afford and and that, those two things I promised you and that's something I think every guy should promise that you'll always have a roof over your head and you always have the best food that I can afford. And that's a huge thing to be responsible for another person. It's huge. Mm -hmm. You know, not to mention kids and all the other things that go along with life and marriage and family and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's, I think, I think it's, uh, it's, it's downplayed how serious life is. It's downplayed how serious marriage is. It's downplayed how serious relationships are. Mm -hmm. And people take things for granted, and a lot of people are looking for the next best thing. You know, guys usually, you know, if, if they're in love, they're not. But if they're just dating, they might be looking for the next best woman. You know, bigger boobs, better butt, better tone, better fur, you know, longer hair, blonde. I don't know what they're looking for, right? It's just categories. No, I think you're naming categories. the list. <laughs> Cat well, categories, right? And women are looking for a provider, and they're looking for a guy with a nice car and a nice house and a location and vacations and... You know all this stuff and and I think when it comes down to it you know what what I wanted was I wanted somebody that I could be married to that I could do stuff like we're doing right now I wanted someone I could be married to that I could do fun things with and I'm not looking for you to we, we mountain bike we've talked about that I'm not looking for you to mountain bike at my level I'm looking for you to just go mountain biking I, you know if we were snowmobiling I'm not looking for you to you know I used to race motocross flat track quads mountain bikes and snowmobiles snow cross and I'm not looking for you to do those things at that level but I am looking for you to come with me and have fun when I'm when I want to go have fun and you want to go with right mm -hmm. it'd be unrealistic for me to expect you to provide me with the level of performance that I can do you know so that you could keep up with me that'd be unrealistic and you probably get hurt you know I actually have seen people's significant others die in situations like that where they expect them to perform and they can't they don't know how they haven't trained for years and, and that type of thing mm -hmm. so so it's unrealistic to get married and expect your husband to be throwing a hundred grand in the account every every year and and have this huge fund that's available for expendable income and toys and fun and outfits and purses and all these things well particularly you know. if you marry at a young age you know and I think that's what we, we've been hearing a lot in these other podcasts or the women calling in is that they're expecting um, what a, maybe more someone more in their 50s could provide potentially mm -hmm. in in a guy that's in his 20s and you know it's it's no dig on guys I mean we're all developing in our 20s you know find a a woman who's making over a hundred grand in her twenties, you know, it's either, either sex, it's very rare. And yeah. something that I really, I can say I really pretty early on submitted to you and our relationship, just to do a slight tangent of 
submitting to you yeah. is you were married before and I heard very sound now you were very definitive but I heard very sound reasoning and you didn't bring up like examples from your past you were like well in this relationship this happened and you know that just it's for a woman that's just like you might as well be just nails on a chalkboard you might as well be <laughs> is agent agent orange on well let's talk about that <laughs> we have not other than knowing that you've had boyfriends before me I have never asked anything about any guy other than you knowing that I've been married and maybe a few stories as examples not like well this person you know I'm not like now oh, this person did this and now you're doing eh. I'm just this is what I like this is what I don't like this is what I want this is what I don't want and not bringing people's names into it or situations mm -hmm. we don't know anything about each other's past in that sense mm -hmm. you know there, there's a lot of this sharing of you know past part sexual partners and things like that and that, I don't I don't agree with that at all mm -hmm. I don't think it's healthy I don't think it's productive I don't think it does anything in a, in a positive sense and I'd invite anybody to write in and write their story and tell us and we'll talk about it and right. you know we'll even bring you on the podcast when we're live and and you know maybe transmitting from a location where we have a computer yeah. You know. Well, you have brought up principles, but not specific examples. Right. And I think that I, I quickly could see the, the logic, the reason for that. And, and because I assumed and believed I was marrying a very competent, intelligent person, <clears throat> why would I contradict that and yeah. doubt you right. if you're saying, you know, I've been through this before. Th this is what we really need to do yeah or not do right. right and so I think that's something that's really missing in relationships is if assuming that you married someone that you thought is competent just just competent uh, why wouldn't you submit either way right to one another mm -hmm. so yeah submitting to the relationship I think that's that's a great one to start with because that's, a good that's start. number one that's a good start yeah mm -hmm. well let's cut this one at this point and yeah i think it's a good point yeah too. and until next time everybody john you got a point you got to get a point oh over there me <laughs> yeah there? john's just a pointer that's later kind of the, the joke <laughs>